What's up everyone, it's your boy Scott. Welcome to the Scott Reports. Today I'm bringing you an anime review of Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt, episode eight. Let me tell you something, it definitely saved the best for last with this fourth episode because this entire episode was a straight up battlefield. It was just action everywhere around, music and all, now with the Earth Federation and the Xeon both being locked in horns in battle with the South Seas Alliance. And yeah, it was a glorious episode. It was, I'll go ahead and say it at the top of the video. This was definitely the better of the four episodes that we had a Gun of Thunderbolt this season. And, you know, we pick up where we left off from last episode, seeing um, EO going to pursue Claudia, a former high-ranking member of the Federation. And he was so badass just in his regular mobile suit. He doesn't really have a Gundam. I think he just has a regular mobile suit that's modified. But the way that he was moving around and actually bouncing off of these things, kicking, and I've been really amazed with how EO has been using his Gundam for mobility. I mean, I think the last time we seen a Gundam this agile was probably an Exia from Gundam 00. So it was awesome to see him in action when he finally went in. And last video, I said that Claudia shot herself in the head and that was a mistake on my part so thanks for whoever pointed that out i know she died but i don't remember how she died exactly as she is heading the charge of this south seas alliance and eo's pursuit to find answers from her but one thing that i must say that i was disappointed in overall with gundam thunderbolt you know besides it being four episodes because whenever they have the universal century i just want more and more because it's such a vast and great storyline was the lack of daryl you know with daryl supposed to be like the second main character of this series and we got to see him go in this episode we got to see him get into some action see how smart he is see how cunning he is and what he can do on that battlefield but we didn't really didn't get him doing anything into this episode until this episode in fact we got more time with bianca than we actually got with daryl who is supposed to be the second main character of this series and on top of that also that new type that's with him i believe his name was billy if that's right i mean he was so minor that i forgot his name we really didn't know anything about him at all except for maybe yeah he's a new type we did see flashes of his ability especially in this episode with his foresight and his ability to see things and sense things before others on the field but that was just it it was like he was just there to say yeah hey he's a new type so i'm a little bit disappointed with him as well because coming from the first episode it felt to me that they were trying to build a rivalry between him and bianca and that just didn't happen but other than that i must say this was still a solid season i just wish it was longer i really do daryl definitely deserved more shine especially with eo being able to show his ass for like three and a half episodes and for daryl to only get one episode to showcase his ability i think that was just a little bit of a shortcoming but of course you know the music always goes in with this series as i call it Gundam Bebop, you know, because just like that jazz soundtrack is just too strong. And one of my favorite parts of the episode is when they had this song. Oh my God, this song was so amazing when they had this girl singing with like this jazz type of tune. And while the song was going on, and it's actually, the song kind of had a little bit of symbolism as it was talking about like a princess who's watching the war from her ivy tower as the soldiers are putting their life on the line. Until she realized how dire things were and decided to go out there and see what the world's like himself i know it's getting off a little bit but it was just an observation but it was just such a good song and it fit the mood and went with everything so well to have this mellow kind of jazz tone to iron in how dire this war is that people are in their mobile suits and their zakus are straight up exploding to the sound of smooth jazz so you know they always bring it with the music in this series and you know this episode was no exception it probably had the best music i probably arguably out of all eight of the episodes and even the south seas alliance they even got their own music in this one it was kind of like an electronica type of song but at the same time it had the chanting behind it it just felt really good it had an unsettling feel to it as they were on the battlefield as well and the south seas alliance they are definitely a different monster than both the federation and the zeon are used to because 
they're a religion, they're a cult, so their way of battle is a lot different than what you would conventionally see on a battlefield as they were sacrificing themselves, they were blowing themselves up, they were dropping bombs, they were doing everything they can to make sure that their mission is accomplished. Like if somebody died, they didn't see it as a bad thing as long as the mission was accomplished. They were openly dying for each other and they were doing kamikaze techniques. It was like one of the Zakus that, cause you know, they do have the Psycho Zaku which is a big thing, but you know, they also have their own units as well. And these guys, they were grabbing on the mobile suits and Zeons. And when they die, they'll have somebody else come in and try to stab them. I mean, their strategy was definitely more savage and more methodical than both these army types were definitely dealing with because we're dealing with people who are fighting for a belief. And it's similar to, you know, what goes on in Iran, Iraq and places like that with the religions of how they, will give their lives for war for a higher purpose. So it was interesting to actually see that in Gundam. I mean, I know we had a federation, we have Zeon, but to tr bring like a monk or kind of like a religion or extreme religion type of principle to the series is definitely an open change to me. And these guys in this South Seas Alliance, they're smart because they got a couple of moles going around in the federation and we know they're in the Zeon as well. So they're infiltrating, doing their thing there. But as far as what their beliefs are or what they're fighting for or like why Claudia decided to go with them besides manipulation, we'll have to wait to hopefully a season three because that's pretty much where the episode left off, leaving us with the menace that is a threat to both the Zeon and the Federation if not dealing with kamikaze mobile suits was bad enough as these people of the South Seas Alliance are being led by a man by the name of Levon Fu. Levon Fu is a new type. Not only is he a new type, this new type was engineered by the Earth Federation. So he went his own way. He started his religion and with the powers that he has as a new type, he's been using this power as more of a power of suggestion, almost you can say it's brainwashing because it's pretty much what it is, but he's using his ability as a new type to get people to follow him, to get people to believe, to get them thinking that he's hearing his higher voice and he's challenging them out too. Again, I really do like this religious aspect. It brings a new type of thing to Gundam that I know I haven't seen before. If I have, it probably wasn't as big as this because he has the Psycho Zaku in his possession. He hasn't painted his cost colors. He is gonna be the nemesis that we're going against. Perhaps we're gonna to get a team up between EO and Daryl? Who knows? We just gotta wait. Now, I know it's like a novel out there. It's probably not translated. So we just gotta sit on our heels and wait to see what happened. And I cannot wait for more of Gundam Thunderbolt because you now have a man who is using religion as power. And we're seeing what these people are doing in order to appease this higher power that he thinks or they think that they're putting on the people, but it's really just this man manipulating everybody. And when that scene, when they showed him turn around, I had to put that as the thumbnail of this video because it did look pretty mostly with him using the power around him to get these people to chant and believe in him and that he's hearing the voice of a higher power. <laughs> Masterful stuff. And if we do get another season, you know, as much as I love the music, as much as I love the beautiful animation that this series have, I am willing to sacrifice that if we can get a 12, 24 episode series of just this. I may be willing to wait. I just don't want to wait too long, like four or five years. I like the turnaround time that we got between season one and season two, but I definitely want more of Gun of Thunderbolt and I cannot wait. Um, overall, I will give this season a solid eight. I definitely like season one better. It seemed like season one did more with the time that it had and it drove things home a little bit more as far as what's going on. This one kind of highlighted the war altogether and it was for the most part an introduction to the South Seas Alliance who is now this third power in this war. But I feel like the first two episodes were really fluff. I mean, it wasn't until episode three and episode four that things really started to pick up and get interesting. And then they drop us off and drop this on our lap that is somebody that both the Zeon and the Federation have to worry about at the end. Oh man, it was a tease because we don't know when it's gonna come back or if it's gonna come back. I'm assuming if they left us with a cliffhanger like this, just like they did with season one, they plan on doing another season. And I cannot wait. And even though I like Thunderbolt Axis, that is a tease of anything because like the episode is only like three or four minutes, which is why I'm not even covering it. It'd be better to just wait till it's done. So guys, 
Let me know what you thought of Gundam Thunderbolt. I'm glad that I was able to catch this and review the last episode again. Um, I will give it overall a solid 8. Um, I like Season 1 better than Season 2, but that doesn't mean that Season 2 wasn't enjoyable. And oh my god, that song they played at the ending. I need to get that song. I need it now. If you know what that song was, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to look it up and try to find it because it was absolutely beautiful. I'll say it again. This was definitely the best episode of the four. Like, going off of just the episode itself, I would give it a nine. But overall, I give the season itself an eight because, again, it's just it was just too short to try to build everything that they built. Especially with us coming in with the expectation of seeing this battle continue between, you know, EO and Daryl. Only for it to pretty much set up. A new power but hey more gundam more universal century you can't complain about that so let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below are you hyped for more gundam or are you tired of it let me know what you thought of this season let me know what you thought of the series and as always if you like the video go ahead and drop it a like if you want to hear more go ahead and hit that subscribe button because there's not sure the content for you guys to indulge on, on this channel even though um my content is going to be a little bit light for the summer season it'll probably only be like one or two videos a week but either way i'll always have something here for you guys in some sort and as i always say you guys can be anywhere on youtube right now but you chose to listen to me i really appreciate that so thanks for stopping by on that note it's your boy scott signing out See you soon.